Next, we need to briefly talk about why many transition metal complexes are very brightly colored. Now, it turns out that this crystal field splitting energy here tends to correspond to the energy of colored light. And so, all of a sudden, electronic tr transitions become possible when we have these two energy levels that weren't possible when we had five degenerate d orbitals. And so this electron here, if it absorbs just the right energy of light, light corresponding to the energy of the crystal field splitting energy, this electron would get promoted so to this upper set. So and when it falls back down, it emitted photons. So, but the idea is that it's going to absorb certain photons, and those photons happen to correspond to colored light. So, and typically, the, the bigger this crystal field splitting energy, the higher the energy of light, the bluer the color, if you will, the more violet the color uh, will absorb. Now, the color absorbed is not necessarily equal to the color uh, that you perceive it to be with your eye. So, typically, if it absorbs one color, we observe the complementary color on the other side of the color wheel. So this ultimately results in two places where we don't expect uh, transition metal complexes necessarily to be colored. And they might be colored for other reasons, but they won't be colored for this reason. So if we might just say we don't expect them to be colored. And that's if you have no d electrons. If you have no d electrons, then there's no electrons down in the lower set here uh, that could get promoted to the upper set. And so we won't absorb light corresponding to that crystal field splitting energy in this case. So, or if you have 10 d electrons, so then you, you definitely still have electrons in the lower set, but there's none of these four spots is available in the upper set. So no transition can happen here either. And we won't absorb light corresponding to the crystal field splitting energy here. Uh, so let's take a look at the following question. So this question says, decide whether complexes with the following ions would be colored. So in essential, we just need to take a look at their electron configurations and make sure that they aren't D0 or D10, essentially. So if we look at chromium 3 plus, we might remind that chromium is argon, 4s1, 3d5. So therefore, chromium 3 plus is argon, 3d3. And so since he's not D0 or D10, he has D electrons but not a complete set, we do expect him to probably be colored. Uh, if we look at copper plus, so again, chromium and copper here are our exceptions, don't forget that. So argon, 4s1, 3d10. And so copper plus one will lose the 4s electron, which is simply be argon, 3d10. And having 10d electrons, no, we do not anticipate complexes containing copper plus one to be colored. So scandium 3 plus, if we look at scandium, we got argon, 4s2, 3d1. So scandium 3 plus will be just isoelectronic with argon. So notice he does not have any d electrons, he's d0. And so again, no, we do not expect complexes containing scandium 3 plus to be colored. And now things are going to get a little bit fun here. Uh, when you've got four to seven d electrons, you've got to deal with low spin and high spin. So if we look at Fe2 plus for a second, so Fe, we might recall is argon, 4s2, 3d6, and so Fe2 plus, take away two electrons, is going to be argon, 3d6. And so here, because we're between four and seven d electrons, it really matters on whether or not we're low spin or high spin here. And so in the first example, we're gonna do low spin, and then in part E, we'll look at high spin. So with low spin here, fill in 60 electrons, the lower set each gets one, and then we start pairing them up down low for low spin. And with six of them, we see that uh, in this case, we've got uh, empty spots up above, we're not D4 or D10. So, and we will say, Yes, this guy expects to be colored. Notice, do we really need to fill in the electrons now? Because we weren't D0 or D10, but we'll find out that this is gonna play a role in magnetism in a little bit. So same thing with the high spin, the electrons fill in differently. So, but even though we fill them in differently, we're not D0 or D10, and so we still have some electrons down low, we still have a couple empty spots up above, and so yes, we expect them to still be colored. Nickel two plus, so nickel is argon, 4s2, 3d8, and so nickel 2 plus, remove the two 4s electrons, it's just argon 3d8, and again, we're not d0 or d10, we're somewhere in between, and so yes, we expect nickel 2 plus complexes to be colored. All right, finally, this last example, we're dealing with iron, 
So, but now in the context, I've given you the actual complex ion, and so you've got to figure out, okay, what charge does he has and things of this sort. So if FeF6 has a minus three charge overall, and each of the fluoride ions is minus one, that means iron's got to be Fe3 plus. So we've got Fe right up here still, so I'll reference that. And so if we remove three electrons, we'll take away the two 4s's and then one of the 3d's, and we'll just be left with argon 3d5. So and it says weak field ligand here, Weak field means it's going to be high spin in one, two, three, four, five. So, and yet again, we're going to expect this thing to be colored. Now, this one's kind of a, a funky exception, potentially. With all the spins lining up, we might actually have a tough time doing an excitation. Uh, the electron that gets excited would actually have to flip its spin, which is somewhat of a rare event. So, technically, some professors might go so far as to say that no, this one's not colored. Uh, but most, or none doesn't expect to be colored anyways, but most of the time we're just looking for D0 or D10 in that regard. But technically, this one may not be colored either.